Hi, everybody. Welcome to All About You. We are very happy to be here with you. And uh, I hope you have your cup of tea or your coffee ready, uh, although this is just for show. Uh, <laughs> we have one. There's no coffee in there. But anyway, I, I invite you to go and grab a cup of coffee um, to enjoy this chat that we're going to have today, okay? Very interesting topic. I am joined today by Audrey. Audrey, welcome to this episode. Thank Tell us about so yourself. Much. Well, hi everyone. I am Audrey. I've been here for a little while and um, I've been in the UK for quite a while as well. But where are you from years. originally? I'm from Singapore and I'm Chinese. Oh, okay. So welcome to the program. I'm pretty sure you have um, very interesting, um, well, tips for us today. But tell well, us, what's yeah, the topic of... Well, yeah, I do, you know, I'll, I'll try my best <laughs> and I'll bring my experiences along. Thank you for coming. We love to have you. So what's today's topic, Audrey? Today's topic is about, hmm. well, something that's very close to all of us, our hearts and our minds. It's a battle that, that never ends. It's called the never-ending battle. Mm, so okay. We shall dwell in, upon that a little bit. It's quite, it's going to be a little bit heavy, isn't it? Yes, it is actually. Um, it's, it's as if every topic, there is so much more we can say about it that one episode is never enough. But today we're going to cover the main points. And this never ending fight, you know, has to do with how we feel, the things we do, the things we decide to do, decisions we make that impact our lives, our families, our professional life, everything in our life. And, uh, well, before we go into um, any more of today's topic, let's see what people on the streets of London have to say about this. We'll be back shortly. For me, it's probably usually heart overhead, rational thinking, but then it's how do you feel about it? Does it sit well with you? Does it resonate with who you are as a person and who you want to be? Sometimes right isn't always right. So yes, I definitely make decisions with my heart for the most part. As long as they align, then what's right feels okay with my heart. Um, I know that I'm my heart. I can't necessarily put into words why that is. And my husband makes decisions with his head. I would say more head over heart. I'd try and be wiser with what you're thinking, although sometimes you are irrational and do things in the moment. Say, dated someone, you know they're no good for you. So you know you shouldn't go for it. You know, you feel really strongly about them, but you still choose not to, because it's not worth pursuing. We don't want to get hurt. Well, I think that I definitely, I try and do them based off of my head, but obviously a lot of the times like emotions do get in the way of those decisions. So I feel like is like a time and place type of, you know, maneuver, but I like to think that they're more conscious, but I think that a lot of the time, you know, emotions and the way that your heart feels, especially if they're decisions about, you know, your family or your friends or your significant other would say that my heart plays a larger role than maybe I would like it to, but most of the time I am, I'm trying to be as sensible about it as I can be. However, I don't think that that always holds. <laughs> Head over a heart, I would say. I think before doing things, my, my decisions are uh, made by, by my brain before and then uh, I do some actions. Obviously in your life happens that you do things by heart. I would say that it's nothing related to social media. So when I tap on social media, I don't, maybe I don't think also do it by heart. So it's something impulsive to you. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I do things thinking before when you have to make decisions like important life decisions, moving job decisions. Sometimes you think about, okay, do it by your heart, something that seems impossible, but mostly I make my decisions for my career, for my job career, before thinking about it and then my heart. I feel like a lot of smaller decisions I do based on how I feel, but if it's like a larger decision, I try to think it out rationally. But if there are too many conflicting emotions, I also like to just sort of sort that out rationally as well and not just go based on whichever is strongest. It, it's highly dependent on the situation. I don't know how much context I feel like I should give, but it's one of the ones where it's sort of a situation trip for a long time. And then I was trying to get over him when I was like, when I started doing that, he's like, ah, uh, 
feelings. And I'm like going into it, I knew I would not have a great time or not necessarily that. But going into it, I knew that I was going to get hurt. And when I got out of it, I'm like, yep, I knew this the entire time. Why did I do this? Well, 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 I am quite impressed, Audrey, that many people said the right thing. However, does their life reflect what they answered? Well, that's the question. We have to be honest. We have. I mean, I'm not saying they weren't, but the tendency is to say the right thing. You know, I don't think people do it on purpose, but it's like, sure, it's, it's mind over, over heart. But the truth is, what does my life reflect? That's the, uh, you work in accounts, right? You work with mm -hmm. accounts, numbers, you know, it's an exact science, right? Logic. Logic, mind, 100% over whatever else. But our life is really, truly a reflection of our choices. It is. Isn't it? Have you had any, any experience of your own where you were... We have a Not lot. Not so rational about... <laughs> we have a lot. I mean, what I find is that sometimes when, you know, it depends on the situation also and as women, how we are. Sometimes when we feel, you know, a little bit tired or dis a bit disturbed, mm -hmm. we tend to go for the heart matters because that's what we are feeling at the moment. And it's just easier, isn't it? It is. The so, heart uh, is always easier. I, I, I can tell you something. I remember um, back in the days where I used to go to school and college, um, you know, maths, since we're talking about numbers here, uh, maths was just too hard for me. So it was always hard over, you know, everything else. Uh, so if it was getting too difficult, I'll just drop it and not, not study what I had to study. Was that smart? No, it wasn't because I always failed in the subject of maths. <laughs> but we have this tendency to do what's easier because women, the thing is, women, we are very uh, special. Let me use that word. We are very special. We have a lot of emotions. Uh, running through our veins, our mind, our everything. Uh, I would say that in an hour, you can feel many things. Like the British weather. There you go. <laughs> so, you know, I, I can speak for myself as well. If I feel a little bit stressed or a bit moody, ah, where is the chocolate? <laughs> and then regrets. But that's another story. But anyway... This is to say that we are just as normal as everyone out there. But we are talking about small things such as chocolate. But there are other decisions that a woman can make that can really impact her future and her present. So we'll go into this in a, mo in a moment. For now, we are going to also have a look at the uh, comments left on Instagram. Oh, yes. we have. What do you have there? Well, we have here says that, as usual, it is head over heart because... The heart is deceitful above all. Okay. Um, and in most cases, I prefer to use my mind because it gives me the solution. But when I use my heart, it gives me problems and the emotions are always high. Okay. So it's like a, a snowball. It is. The more when you are on emotion mode, which means you do what you feel like doing, it's, it just grows. It's I hard it's to like go back to discipline. It's also like a muscle, you know, yeah. our heart and our minds as, as it is. It's a muscle. So mm -hmm. the more we use something, the stronger, the stronger it, will. it will get. Good point. Good point. Right. My comments are as follows. Uh, Maria says, it is an, it's not easy, but it's possible. Head over heart. Then another one says, Head over heart. It's not easy, but it's a choice that one needs to consider without the heart. Mm. And then uh, one last says, head over heart. Feelings lead to regret. Okay. Again, everyone seems to, to give and to say the right answer. But we are going to show you why and, and, and how this is not really true 
on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, you know, as you from the moment you wake up, we know the theory, but we have a hard time practicing what we really need to do. There is a Bible verse, Audrey. Can you please share with our viewers? Yes. Today's Bible verse has a lot to do with today's topic. Let's and, hear it, please. And it's very, very uh, something that we always know, but in practice is a little bit hard. Yeah, you see that even the Bible, the Bible is wonderful. We always mention a Bible verse. You know, if we to see that the Word of God is a real map to survival, is a map, is a manual to life's uh, questions, there is nothing you will not find in the Bible that will not answer your questions. And this is yet another example. So let's let's hear what the Bible says. In Jeremiah 17, 9, it says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? When you read the Bible, focus on the key words. Look at this. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately Look at the word, desperately wicked. So something, when you are desperate, it means you are constantly trying to do that thing or to think about, about that certain thing. It, desperate. Look how the heart is. And then it says, who can know it? How many times, Audrey, we hear in the movies, oh, but the heart, I could not choose what my heart you know, uh, fell, I fell in love with so-and-so. Uh, he's a married man, but I can't, you know, I don't have control over my heart. Yes, you do. You have. You have, because this is proof. Look, who can know, who can know it? We do not know our heart. All we get to see of the heart is the emotions we feel. But it doesn't mean it's right and that we can't tame it, you know? And uh, we're gonna talk now about a few um, points, real life examples of, of areas of your life where if you're not careful, your heart will deceive you. And like someone here said on the comments, uh, Angel, Angel Stefan, she says, feelings lead to regret. And very soon we are going to talk about real life situations where Pre, I'm pretty sure you will relate to these situations because, I, well, I can, some of them. Um, and you will see how the heart is, is desperately wicked. It's as if we have an enemy inside of us trying to push us. Just do it. It feels good. Nobody will know. It's going to be okay. And then you look at your life. It's a reflection of failure. Because imagine if we were to do everything we felt like doing. To st for starters, you would never go to work on a Monday. Hmm? Right? Never. <laughs> Your duvet is there hugging you really tight. It's nice and warm. You know, mm -hmm. the alarm clock sounds really far. I can almost write a poem about it. But anyway, so before we move on, I want to I talk to you about this book that I have here. You know that we always like to recommend a book. Some people don't like to read. I understand we are not all the same. However, push yourself because there is a lot of wisdom in some books. I wouldn't say all, unfortunately, but there's one here that Audrey, I really think is going to help our viewers at home from all ages. And it's called The 40 Secrets for the Single Woman right here. Very cute little book, easy to read. You, get, you can get through this very easily, although I advise you to read one chapter at a time. Think about what you're reading and change your life. This is very, very helpful. So although it says for singles, it is for all women. You Absolutely. Know. I can, well, although singles, uh, we have a tendency to be a little bit extra emotional. Did I just say that? <laughs> no, yeah, I, I think just... all... All women in every stage of their lives, we, we have a little bit of emotion. We do, Audrey, but I, I, I have to go back to this thing of the single ladies. Please don't hate me. Uh -oh. We are all friends here. We all want to help one another. 
We daydream a lot when we are younger, when we are especially love life. You have to agree with me. We, we like to fantasize things in our mind and it's nothing of what we're thinking. <laughs> that then, goes to the first point. Really? Actually. Is that your point? So yes. let's hear it. It, it says here <laughs> that they make wrong decisions in their love life and they see the signs that the person is not okay, but they it's, still go for it. Yeah, so the person they want to date or marry, they can see that there's something wrong there, but what's For example, other? the person has a different, you know, aim, goal, and goals for their life. Yeah, yeah. They're not going in the same direction. Mm -hmm. They don't, don't have the same go. principles. No, not the same principles. Morals. Morals. They're going in a different path from them. Mm. But what matters is, is the here and now. It's like the here and now. All we, we need is love. No, it's not true. Take it from someone who's been married for over 20 years. It's not a lot yet. However, it's something. You've been married for a while as well. You need more than love for a relationship to work. You need to be on the same page. You need to want the same things. For instance, Audrey, you are dating and then the other person says, oh, I want to live all the way in Jamaica. Oh, I want to be in Britain, somewhere around here. How is that going to work if you turn a blind eye to this? I remember also another instance is like the person loves traveling. But the person that she's with, like, is a homebody. <laughs> he was born there. Yes. He grew up there and he wants He's to. He's comfortable with where he is, yeah. his life as it is. But the person, There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong. It's a pers personality thing. But then you are like a city person. You know, you want to travel. You want to go get things. And, th and, and the person... Actually, this is very, very true. How many, how many uh, marriages break up because of that? Yeah. So this takes us to another point. It's about money. Okay. How many decisions have you made that you regretted later? How many things have we bought, Audrey, that we were like, no, but I really want it. I really need it. And then... You look at it and it's like, why did I just bother? Why did I s wasted money on this? We, we are I've all got a funny story about that, oh, actually, yeah, of me. me. <laughs> I always, before, I always just... Disclaimer, before. <laughs> <laughs> I always just used to buy something that looks good on the rail, but I don't try it on me. Okay. So when I bring it home, it, uh, no, no. <laughs> it didn't fit. And then you, I start wondering, but it looked good on the rail. Mm -hmm. Why does it look good on me? And it's it because, was a disaster. You see, but this is very common. However, how about those more serious decisions where you rush to make an investment, enter into a partnership with someone who doesn't share the same values? Oh, but I'm not marrying the person. Yes, but you are sharing an important part of your life, which is your finances. What if that person has, sees no problem in lying, in cheating, and you are someone who likes things very black and white, very righteous, and when you least expect, oh, where is the money gone? Because you rushed into a decision to do with money that you now regret. How many times... I could go on and on with examples like this. How many times did you trust someone abroad, for example, to um, do something for you there, to be your eyes there, and you just trusted? You know, there's actually another verse that says, Jeremiah 17, 5. Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in a man, in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord. You see, even when you think you can trust someone, you should hold back and think, hold on, 
can I deposit my life on someone else's hands? Doesn't mean you shouldn't trust anybody at all. Because, for example, I am married. I trust my husband, but not like I trust God, for example. Do you understand? Humans are humans. We make mistakes. So this is yet another example on how emotions affect your finances in serious ways and not so serious, but they do and bring a lot of regrets. Back on the trust following trust, there comes grudges. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> when, yeah. when we, you know, put our trust in men mm -hmm. and men do fail us from time to time. Because they do. The next emotion is grudges. And then you create another problem. And for that, you should really watch our, our episode about forgiveness, okay? Which will be linked on the comment section. So the next point is really about people. Sometimes they make themselves feel like victims. Mm -hmm. And what they're doing is, is not correct or unjustified. Mm -hmm. But they tend to over-exaggerate. Yeah. We tend to, you know look at ourselves in in a way that we are, we feel that we are correct and we are mm -hmm. you know in in any situation in a disagreement we are always standing up for ourselves we True. we don't want to to kind of back back down and say hey you know maybe mm -hmm. i've got a part to play in this mm -hmm. um yeah. maybe i was wrong so and, and sometimes you, you, you did, you, you were a victim. You were a victim. However, it's time to move on. It's time for you to, you know what, enough of these emotions, this negativity. Because, in, you know, negative emotions bring about more negative emotions. You know, uh, for example, growing up, I, I, I couldn't, my parents couldn't afford university for us for me and my brothers, my siblings. So there was a point I used to put myself down and be very negative about it. Oh, what about my future? And one day I said, you know what? I'm not going to depend on a degree. I can make it. I can be creative. I, I, I learn things quickly. You know, be positive about it. Come out of that cycle of negativity, you know, that, that victim kind of thing. So we are not here by no means saying that what you went through, it wasn't important or, or real. It was, because obviously it hurt you, but it's time to move on. This is why we are here today, right? Yes. So there's another point here that I would like to mention, which is very similar to what we just said. You know, people who get anxious and depressed uh, in situations that occur in their lives, obviously we have feelings, we go through things, we feel things, however, you know, like I said, sometimes enough is enough. How much time, how much longer am I going to dwell on this sadness? What is it doing to me? For example, Audrey, uh, you, you lost your, your grandmother and your, your grandfather mm -hmm. uh, a while back. I can imagine you were very close to them. There's a time, we are human, there's a time for, for grieving, but there's a time to... Let's move on, you know. They are now in peace. I'm still here, so I need to live my life. I need to make them proud in a way. It's true. Right? Snap this, out of it in a way. This sometimes makes us to the, uh, the next point, which is that we keep going up and down. It's like we are, because of this indecision mm -hmm. that we don't uh, take to control our what we feel and how we are and how we react to things, mm -hmm. we go up and down in both in our emotions and in our faith. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's just about you. You know, I, I, I really think, I don't know what you think at home, but I really think that a real friend and a good spouse play a very important role when it comes to this. How many times did I have a friend who said to me, Listen, just come out of that. How much longer are you going to be dwelling on it? And I remember I was really like, oh, how dare you? But then I went home and I thought, yeah, 
That's right. Look at my life. I'm like stuck. It's like I froze. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like I'm in a cast. You know, when you break your arm, you are in a cast. Your emotions put you in a cast. You know, I, I even, it gets me angry when I talk about this because obviously it's easier when we see someone in that situation than ourselves. But this is something we need to remember for ourselves, you know, come out of that situation, right? And my point, my last point is, uh, we have this tendency to, it's very much like buy now, pay later. Feel now, do what you want to do now, and don't worry about tomorrow. Well, tomorrow will always come and, oh, actually, the bill will always come. And when the bill comes, it's painful. But the bill doesn't come just with the bill, you know, it comes with interest. And the bailiff's <laughs> knocking at your door. <laughs> Which means so this is... resolve this quickly because it, sometimes it's even life-threatening. So th this is something very, very deep. I usually, when I, when I go to the church and I talk to the younger ones and I have that time to talk to the teenagers, for example, I tell them, if I could go back in time, I would have done many things differently. Value what you have. Put all your strength in what you have in what you are doing, in your studies. Prepare yourself for the future. Don't be lazy. Because we are now grown-ups and we know we could have done better. And we don't want you to feel like this because regrets, Audrey, I don't know about what you think about this, but regrets is a very painful emotion to have because there's nothing you can do about it. And it, it just makes you stuck because... Yes. You, you keep, it's like one regret after another mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and there's no end to that. Yeah. So let's avoid what we can, all right? And I want to tell you as well, you know that we have a WhatsApp line chat that you can get in touch with us. We have a 24-hour helpline you can call us or just chat with us. If you're going through something, you know, something in your life, you are maybe caught up in a situation with lots of emotions, lots of things going through your mind, your heart. You don't know what to do. Maybe you feel like you are too deep into the problem, into the situation, and you think there's no solution for you. There is a solution for you. Book an appointment. Come and talk to one of our pastors. Our church is open every single day, huh, Audrey? Mm -hmm. Christmas Day, whatever day. Every we day. never close. So after you heard all this information, what can you do apart from all the advice we gave you? Take note of a few points we are going to share with you now, okay? Audrey, what's the first point? It says that we have to learn to focus. I think this is a very, a, a very key word, which mm -hmm. is to focus on the facts okay. of your reasoning. And that will help you shift your focus away from what you're feeling mm -hmm. and to think about the consequences and to think about what is factual. Mm -hmm. And what it's doing to you and your health. Absolutely. Second one, focus on what is written in the Word of God. Do not focus on what people say or how you feel, but focus on the Word. This is because the heart deceives, but the word sets us free. Listen, I encourage you to read your Bible. You will be so uplifted. You will have so much wisdom to help you go through whatever you're going through. And the next one is to focus on what you can do and what you cannot do. Mm -hmm. Because it's no point to focus on what you cannot do to get anxious, to get weak, mm -hmm. to get frustrated. But if you focus on what you can do, you make a whole lot of difference. Yeah. Pick your battles. Some battles are not worth fighting. There's things we can't change, such as the past. But guess what, Audrey? We can change today and tomorrow. Actually, you changing today 
will bring about a different tomorrow. Isn't it? Exactly. And another thing we cannot change is people. Sometimes point. we are so, you know, we are so irritated or, you know, we, we feel frustrated at, at mm. injustices or things that people do to us. And, but we can't change the people. Mm -hmm. So it's best just to look at us, yeah. what we can do and do it. Absolutely. Good points there. Are you taking note of this? And last one. Look at this one. Be happy and content with what you have. This way you won't covet what others have. How many times does this happen? You go to a wedding. You look at the bride, but you are single. Trust God. Look at yourself. Your day will come. Invest in yourself as you wait. Make yourself a better person, a, very, a better version of yourself. Learn new skills. When you get married, when you find the right person, you will be ready. So look at what you have. Value what you have. Sometimes Audrey, people are a bit jealous of what others have, but they don't know what happens behind closed doors. It's true. The so grass they, is always greener on the other side. But then, then they rush into a relationship they rush into something just because they don't want to be on their own on a Saturday night. But guess what? It's better to be by yourself on a Saturday night, chill out with your cat, with your dog, or just by yourself and enjoy the peace and quiet. Because if you marry wrong, right, Audrey? Mm -hmm. There's, there won't going to be any peace. Okay, so this is just a few tips that we wanted to share with you. And just to finalize, Audrey, uh, a, a bonus tip right here. Stop listening to certain songs. Why, Audrey? Well, <laughs> I think it's quite obvious because these songs are just based on feelings. No, they, they, they tell you to follow your heart. They tell you to feel, to mm. follow your heart, to do things that will have horrible consequences later on. Yeah. It's just not worth, it's not worth, like you were saying, mm -hmm. pick your battles mm -hmm. because they're not, there are some things that they're not worth going into. And the roller coaster of an emotion is not, it's not something that, mm -hmm. you know, we, we should stress ourselves and, and delay our lives for it. Mm -hmm. I agree, Audrey. I think that you knowing what to uh, to do, what not to do, which means pick your battles, you, you are safeguarding yourself. Can I say that? Mm -hmm. You are self-guarding yourself. You're protecting your heart. Okay? So just on this note, before we say goodbye, we have a YouTube channel with Christian songs that we actually inspire you and help you to think about the Word of God, to see a way out to those, you know, um, emotions that you're feeling right now, that people, they look at you, they think you're doing well, but inside there's so much going on. Instead of you listening to uh, songs out there that tell you, follow your heart, you know, love is all you need, uh, or movies from Hollywood that tell you, just run away, you know, Romeo and Juliet, all that kind of stuff, ditch it. Because if we were to see the real life story ending of these movies, it wouldn't be pretty. Okay? Remember that. So the YouTube channel details will be on the screen now. So before we go, Audrey, there's something coming up for women only. What is it? It's the self-help that we are going to have very shortly. What is a self-help for people out there who don't know? The self-help is a special meeting that we have for ladies that helps us to identify these specific things that only us as women can identify with mm -hmm. and how we can overcome them, how we can, you know, deal with them better. Mm -hmm. And it's an amazing, you know, there are always amazing topics, there are always things that the Holy Spirit will inspire you to do mm -hmm. that will change your life. 
Absolutely. So it's a meeting for women. Again, from women to women, you will enjoy it because it will inspire you to get out of, your, of, that, of that thing, that emotion snowball that you are living in. You know, it will encourage you. It will lift you. You're going to be okay. All right? So have a look at this video, at this short video that will show you a few images of our self-help meeting. Remember that you can uh, come, obviously. All the branches of our church in London will come together in Finsbury Park. The address is on the screen. We get together at the Rainbow Theatre in Finsbury Park, just outside the station. And uh, you're going to have a great time. I guarantee you that you will be so truly empowered. empowered. People I, misuse that, that so word right. these days. I'm empowered. Are you really? Come and join us and you will see. Audrey, like, share and what? Subscribe. Don't forget, if you like this program, share it. Yes. God bless you. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. The Godly Wood Seminar takes place every two months on Saturdays at 3 p.m. This is an exclusive meeting for women to reach their potential and develop their personal growth. Thousands have found transformation in different areas of their lives. By taking part of this meeting has transformed my life, especially internally and the way I look at myself. As well as inner renewal, the seminars are essential to achieving external change. The goal is to equip women with the tools and the mindset needed to overcome challenges, break free from limitations, and have a life of purpose and fulfillment. Whoever takes part in these seminars notices a change in their daily lives. The seminars are important for me because it's an opportunity that I have to become someone different. In the seminars, participants delve into a variety of topics aimed at nurturing personal growth and fostering a deeper connection to one's faith. Through the lectures and interactive exercises referred to as challenges, women can explore themes such as self-esteem. Insecurity makes you do things that can cost you precious years of your life. Relationships. A woman who's so defensive, do you think she's successful in love? Personal development. If you are a pleasant woman, you are consistent. A pleasant woman, she's understanding. And spirituality. It's about God making a new person, living inside of you, giving you a new heart. Only when he lives in you, you can truly overcome the way you see things. The changes in individual thoughts and actions are largely due to the direction received from the Word, and this is a definite highlight of the seminars. Join us in the next Godlywood seminar so that together we can become the best versions of ourselves. At 232 Seven Sisters Road, Finsbury Park, London N4 3NX also live streamed to Universal Churches outside London.